what an introduction <clears throat> it's true though <laughs> i'm just kidding it, it's such a privilege for me to be able to come back this year and just to be able to share what god has done in my life and just to be able to share with you guys what i have learned uh while away okay um some of you guys i haven't seen since last year i have to you guys but was it funny <laughs> Thank you, Vic. Vic, no, okay? I think I'm so funny, but only I think that, of course. Um, I want to share something before I go into preaching is that um, when I was younger, when I was in my teenage year, when I see guest speaker come to our church, uh, they were introducing their significant others, right? Mostly it's the men that do like, oh, there's my beautiful wife here with me, right? And it's been my dream to be able to to be introduced like that. But God has a funny way of doing that, okay? I'm going to be the one introducing, okay? So I would like to introduce my very handsome husband here with me today. Baby, can you please stand up? <laughs> God is so good and uh, it's so uh, glad to be back. And I have seen a lot of new faces that I haven't seen before, which is great, okay? So I'm just going to go on and uh, let's pray before we jump in. God, I just thank you for everything that you have done in my life. And I thank you for this opportunity, God. I am your vessel. God, I am nothing without you. So uh, use me as you will today. Every word that I speak, let it be to glorify you. And let it be what you want your people to hear today, God. I am your vessel and I am your children. I pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, I want to talk about believer's authority, okay? Not only that, I want to talk about the abundant life, okay? In John 10, 10, it says that the thief come not but to steal, kill, and destroy. I come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. You see, God wants us to have life. And not just a life that is surviving, but a life that is thriving, an abundant life. However, many Christians, many believers, they go on their life daily not knowing what God has promised us. And they don't know what the will of God is in their life. And they don't know that they have the authority that Jesus has given us. And that is exactly what I talk about. Okay, God wants us to live an abundant life, but how do he want us to live that way? Um, by knowing your authority, okay? So when God created the world, you guys all might hear, might already know the story, he created human, right, to rule over the earth. That's in Genesis 1, 28. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it. Rain over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that secure along the ground. You see, when God created the earth and when he created us, we were to rule over the world. We were to conquer every wild beast in the world. We were to be kings and queens, right? And we were to have relationship with God. That's what we were created for. But however, the devil right he come to kill steal and destroy and that is exactly what he did in the garden of, of eden okay uh, he we know the story he come and deceived the woman and the woman took the fruit of the uh, of knowledge of good and evil and they gave it to her husband and through the old disobedience, they sell their rights, their authority, they trade that over to the Satan, uh, the Satan, and now the Satan rule the earth. And it said that in 2 uh, Corinthians 4, 4, Satan, who is the God of this world, you see, now instead of us being kings and queens ruling over the world, Satan, he become the God of this world. And he has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. 
They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. You see, when the devil took over the world, he blinded every single person, right? And then through that, we have natural sin. And what sin does it is separate us from God. That is exactly uh, the Bible me when it said death, right? Death. Death is the separation of us from God. And because of that, we don't know how to live anymore. We have these curses, diseases enter the world, sinful nature enter, uh, enter the world, and every single one of us sins and have fallen short from the glory of God. And exactly because of that, we are sinners and we have one destination, okay? Do I need to say it or do you guys know? Say it? Okay. We have one destination, and that is hell. Okay? However, God has other plans for us. Okay? God has other plans for her. He sent Jesus Christ. You see, when Jesus come to the earth and he conquered, he conquered death, he didn't only conquer death. He took that back, authority to rule. And he took that authority back so that he may rule. And it said Matthew, uh, to, uh, Matthew 28, 18, it said that Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and are on earth. You see, the devil only had the authority here on earth. But Jesus, when he took that back authority, he was also given the authority from heaven. So see, Jesus has authority on heaven and on earth, okay? So what did Jesus do with that authority? Jesus' life, he throughout his life on earth, he used that authority. He cast out demons, he healed the sick, he made the blind see, and he set the captives free. So that's how Jesus used his authority. He conquered the world. He conquered death. But what happened? What happened to that authority when Jesus isn't here anymore? Here's, that, here's the good news. Um, what, what I love about this is, about our salvation, is that it doesn't stop there. Jesus passed that authority to us. It said here in 1 Peter 3.22, now Christ had gone to heaven. He is sitting in the place of honor next to God and all the angels and authority and power except his authority. And in Luke uh, 10, 19, look, I have given you the authority over all the power of the enemy and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. You see, when Christ died on the cross, he didn't stay on the cross. He took three days and he rose. And he did not just rose back for the dead. He went back to heaven and he had the authority over heaven and earth. Okay? So as Christians, we should not just die and reborn again. We should go walk and get that authority, take that authority. Because here it said that Jesus has given you authority over all the power of the enemy, not just the wild beast. He didn't give us only the power to ruin the world anymore, but he gave us also the authority over the spiritual realm. What does that mean? That means we have authority not only in the natural realm, but if we stay in the will of God, we also have the authority in the uh, supernatural realms, okay? Jesus gave us authority. We have we have the authority over the devil, sickness, and diseases. That means we can do all things through Christ, right? But like I said in the beginning, many of us doesn't know that authority and we don't know how to use our authority and we don't know that we even have authority, right? So today I want to tap into that because I want you to have an abundant life. As you go through 2023, if you know exactly who you are, 
children of God, and if you know that the authority Jesus has given you, you can have that abundant life that Jesus promised. Okay? Um, first, how I want to share a story. Okay? Illustration time. I love illustration. If, um, if I have enough time, uh, I would have like a whole skit up here. Okay, and uh, demonstrate it instead of just speaking it. So there was a man. There was a man, and he wanted to go see the White House. Okay, so he go and march up to the White House, but then the bodyguard, the bodyguard was like, "Whoa, whoa, what are you doing?" He was like, "I want to go to the uh, White House. I just want to go in enter." And then the guard was like, mm -mm, "No, you can't. You don't have authority here." And then he was like, "Man, I really want to go." into the White House, what do I have to do? The, the security was like, well, I don't know, you just wait on the side. So, so the first guy, let's call him the first guy, wait on the sideline. And then there was another man who came, and who he come up to the guard and just wave his hand, and the guard opened the door. And then the, the man on the sideline was like, whoa, 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 how can you, I can't get in, and, but you let him in. And then the bodyguard was like, oh, that's the president. He lives there. You know, he has the authority over the whole place. Uh, he was like, okay, that makes sense. I'm not the president, so I can't go in. And then another guy, he comes up, and he come and he took out something and showed it to the guard, and the guard let him in. And then the guy was like, whoa, he's not the president. I know, because the president just passed by. So who is he? And then the bodyguard was like, he worked for the president. See, he had a badge that he showed us that proves he worked for the president so he could go in. It's the same thing with our authority. See, when that guy had the badge to show that he worked for the, uh, the president, he had proof, right? The same way with us, right? He had some... He had some relationship with the president. That's why he was able to enter the White House. In the same way, if you want to tap in into your authority that Jesus had given you, you have to remain in Christ. It says here in John 50, 4, Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is se uh, severe for the vein, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Friends, we cannot tap into authority if we don't stay and abide in the persons who give us the authority. You see, that person who entered the police, uh, the, the man that who showed a badge to get into the White House, if he doesn't uh, have any relationship with the president, and if he doesn't prove that he have any relationship, he will be end up like the first guy on the sideline who want to go in but can't, okay? And that is the first thing that we must do. We must abide in God. We must abide in God. And let's be honest, just by being and in God and abiding in God, we have so much benefit for, uh, from it, not only your authority, but that's for a, dim, a different sermon. Okay? The second way that you can tap into your authority is speaking to it. Okay? It says here in Mark 11, 23, I told you the truth. If you say to this mountain, may you be lifted and be thrown into the sea, it will happen. But you must really believe it, it will happen, and have no doubt in your heart. God didn't tell us to pray, pray about our situations. He didn't say to beg for a solution. He said, say it. He said, say it. When Jesus was on earth and he got tempted three times, how did he conquer the devil? How did he resist the devil, he spoke it with his mouth and he said, it is written. You see, he never had to pray the devil away. He never had to beg the devil to go away. He said with his mouth and it come true. Not only that, let's go back to the beginning. When God created the world, he says, 
let there be life. God never created anything with his hand except for a human being. He says it and he had that authority. So that authority made it happen. Does that make sense? So when you have the authority, so what authority do we have over? We have authority over disease and darkness and illness, scorpions or wild animals, right? If you speak into your situation, if you speak into it, because you have that authority that Jesus has given you, it will come to pass. For example, many believers, including me at one, to, at one point, we didn't know the authority we have over uh, diseases, illness. So when we get sick, we'd be like, oh, pastor, please lay your hands on me. Which is, yes, the Bible teaches that I lay hands to pray for one another. But I think that's more for baby Christians, you right? And they said, oh, no, I'm so sick. I can't do this. So if the, you're still speaking into a thing that are what the Bible are saying. It's basically you have authority. So you get sick, you got sick, what do you do? <laughs> no, devil. This body is the temple of God, and you should not put your hands on it. So leave me in the name of Jesus. And that will happen. Will it happen right away like a miracle? Maybe not. But Jesus promised us that when we use our authority as speaking into it, it will happen. And many, many times in the Bible, Jesus had confessed. Not only confess your sin, but confess things to come into reality. When you speak with your authority, whatever is in the spiritual realm got brought out into the natural world, into our reality. And that's what your voice, and that is what you're speaking, can do. Okay, another one that I love this one. This one I personally am still working on because I know that we have a lot of work to do because nobody is perfect. You have to renew your mind. Okay, Roman 12, 2 said, don't copy the behavior and custom of this world, but let God trust for you into a new person by changing the way you think. When you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So here, God said that you're the one who have to renew your mind. You see, our salvations, our eternal life is a free gift to us. But if we want to live that abundant life and we want to live a victorious life, uh, life you're going to have to do something about it, okay? Because uh, like the Bible said, the devil is roaring like a liar, trying to fight who he may devour. So here, the Bible tells us to renew our mind. What, what about the, some of the things that you have to re renew your mind on? Oh, friends, so many things, so many things. For example, I am so tired. What does the Bible say? He said, I will give you rest. Okay, so whatever situation you're in, go back to the Bible and find a scripture and play that over again in your mind, okay? Instead of saying, I'm this and that, what does the Bible really tell you about you, okay? Uh, let's go back to the Jesus, how he uh, resists the devil. He said, it is written. He didn't say, it is written in Lermu. Uh, he didn't say it is written on the history book. He quote the Bible. Even Jesus himself quote the Bible. He said, it is written that men should not live by bread alone. Correct? So Jesus, even Jesus himself, he used his authority by going back to the Bible and renewing his mind. So that's the same thing here that we have to do. We have to renew our mind. Let, uh, I'm going to give us some of the example that we go through daily, okay? You might say it is impossible, but God said all things are possible. Luke 18, 27. You, oh, I love this one because I personally struggle with this one and still working on this one. No shames here. Nobody really loves me. God said, I love you. And that in John 3, 16 and John 3, 34. You might say, I can't go on. But Jesus said, God said, my grace 
is situations. Sorry, my accent. You know, English is my third language. A second Corinthians thir- uh, twelve nine and Psalms ninety one fifteen. Now, you might say, I can't do it, right? The Bible says you can do all things. And that is Philippians four thirteen. Renew. That's how you renew your mind. The devil might put something in your hand like, I can't manage, right? I don't have enough. The Bible said, I will supply all your needs. Philippians 4.19. And what I love about the young generation, especially in the correct community, is that they think that they have to live up to their parents' expectations, right? They have to go to school first. They have to graduate from college first. But God said, fight first the kingdom of God and everything will be added to you. Yeah, I see some of this. Yeah, here. Now, this one said, I am afraid. I have, uh, the Bible said, I have not given you a spirit of fear. 2 Timothy 1, 7. Now, I'm going to be very vulnerable here because I believe that when you are vulnerable, God can use that. I'm going to use that how I renew my mind uh, when growing up. Okay, growing up in the Asian community, I have always been the um, fluffy size, you know. And that in the Asian community, so ooh, she's, you know. So I get bullied a lot. And a lot of people say that, oh, you're fat. Uh, if I were that big as you, I would not eat. And my whole entire life, I've been bullied because of my size. And I started to believe that just because I'm fat, I don't deserve love. And I started to believe that just because I'm fluffy and a little bit bigger on the sides, I can't be beautiful. And that's what I believe in my whole entire life. So I thought that when I finally have a husband, all that problem going to go away. I was wrong. Very wrong. And I should, I should have renewed my mind on that first before I married because I gave my husband a lot of uh, trouble because of that. I constantly told, say that I'm not worthy of his love. And I keep thinking that because I'm a, the bigger size that he's going to find another woman and cheat on me. And those were all the things that the devil was attacking me in my mind. Right, but then when I heard about renewing your mind, I was like, no, I have to change my mind. So whenever I start thinking that you said, oh, you're not enough, you're not beautiful, you're fat, I go back to the scripture. It is written, I am beautifully, fearfully, wonderfully made. I am made in the image of God. It's like these are the things. Oh, okay. These are the things that I have to keep talking to myself to renew my mind. And another thing is, uh, you might know this song. I, when, I, when I ever think that my husband doesn't love me or when I don't deserve love from other people, I go back to the description. I am already loved. I'm already chosen. I know who I am. I know what God has spoken and I am enough. Those, those are the things that I keep playing in my head. I prayed about, I speak into it, you know. So that's how I renew my mind. Now, am I perfect? No, nobody's perfect. We are all on our way to perfection, right? The Bible says we will never perfect as long as we live in the natural world, but we try our best to get there. So, what, what am I saying to, to you today? For you to have the abundant life the victorious life that God promised us, you must first abide in him. Stay with God, okay? One of our our pastor professors said that, I'd rather be two steps behind God than a step in front of God, okay? And Moses says, if your prince doesn't go there, I don't want to go. So the same way for us, abide in God. And the second thing, that how you use your authority that God has given to you is speak into it. Speak into your authority. Do you want something? It, uh, the Bible said, when you speak anything according to my will, it will come to pass. Angel, go, get, go and prepare that card that God has for me and bring it to me one day. Oh, I have no money, 
angels, go and prepare those financial because God said, I have a budding life and I can't have an abundant life if I'm broke, right? I need money to live. So that's okay. It's the truth. You, you see, speak into your situation. Use it the authority. And third of all, third of all, renew your mind. You don't have to live in sickness. You don't have to live being broke. You don't have to lay being sick and tired all the time. And you don't have to lay being sick of tired of being sick and tired. Because what the Bible has promised us is all in there. Once a person said, I wish life come with instructions. You know, Christians, we do. We have a life manual and it's called the Bible. Okay, try reading it sometimes. Okay, so that is our life instructions. And that is how you can have an abundant life by using your authority that God has given you. Okay, that is all for my message. Okay, I know that uh, many of us here might already know that you have authority. Some of you might not have yet realized that you have authority, but today you do. But I want to invite up the band just to play the piano slowly and just um, maybe sing a slow song. And I want to everybody close your eyes and bow your head. If you're in here and you don't know God and you can't exercise this authority because you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior into your life, so you can't exercise this authority and you are tired of living in the world, living in day to day and you just want need to change. And if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior at this time, I want you to raise your hand. Nobody's looking, everybody has it down. Okay, uh, God, I thank you so much that every single one of us here have known you and have accepted you as our Lord and of Savior, Jesus Christ, God. We thank you that you did not only die on the cross to give us our free salvation, but you have given us the authority to overcome all principle and all, all the enemy's power, and nothing here can it, it injure us as long as we have pined in you, as, as long as we speak into our, our situation, and as long as we live according to your word, God. We thank you for your promise to have an abundant life. And I ask that as we go into 2023 here, every single person here will exercise their authority that you have given them, God. And I ask that we're going to walk in our authority, using our authority that you have given us to have the abundant life that you have given us, God. We thank you for the new covenant, and we thank you for your blood, and we thank you for your unconditional love, God. I pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen.